Hello YouTube and welcome to another virtualization tutorial. So in this video we're gonna continue our series of Hyper-V and we're gonna create actually a virtual machine on Hyper-V server. So already let's get started. So as you can see here and if you have followed my last video we actually installed a Hyper-V server okay so we have configured the network and also the computer name and other stuff for remote managing okay so in this video we're gonna actually create a virtual machine inside Hyper-V okay so the first thing to do just for organization we're gonna create two folders in this server in this Hyper-V server one for VMs and one for virtual hard disk okay so I'm gonna do my uh, command line here prompt so as you may actually know we have two windows one for server configuration and one for the command line so I will go for the command line window and let's go for example to our C drive here we go or actually I'm gonna Okay, so in C drive we're gonna create a directory for the VM, so I'll call it just VM, here we go, and inside this directory, okay, we're gonna create another directory which will contain our virtual disk, okay, so let's uh, create it and we call it whatever you want, let's call it for example virtual hard disk, okay. So now we have actually two directories, the VM1 will, which contains our VM and another directory which will contain actually the virtual hard disk, okay? So now we are done with our server here, we're gonna do the Hyper-V manager in our Windows 10 machine and we're gonna actually configure the options for the server, okay? So let me go to the manager here, here we go. So as you can see here, we are connected to our Hyper-V server. So if we go to the settings, Hyper-V settings, we're gonna see a couple of options here, okay? So the first thing here we're gonna configure is the path to the virtual hard disk that we have created, okay? So if you remember, the path will be actually VM, then virtual hard disk okay vht okay so this is the first path that we have actually created and just for organization purposes okay and for the virtual machine they will not be in this directory but they will be simply in the directory vm okay so this is the two main things that actually we can actually set first of all okay so let me apply the changes here we go so now the, the changes has been applied okay so before creating our first VM we must also create what we call a virtual switch which is a very very important step okay so just right click on your server and go to virtual switch manager okay so here the type, the first question we ask what type of virtual switch do you want to create? So if you want your VM to be connected to the internet, you have to choose the external. The internal one will be just connected to the other VMs and the host, okay? And the private, it's just like a virtual switch for just VM. So as I want my VM to be connected to the external world, I will choose the external here okay so let's create and here we have to give it a name so let's call it for example external lane external lane okay and for the external uh, network you have actually to connect this virtual switch to the card that you have okay so me I have only one so I will choose it and make sure to check this uh, 
radio button here external network okay so and I will apply the changes as you can see here so pending changes may disturb near network connectivity so I will see yes I have no problem with that so now the changes has been applied we can proceed to the next step okay okay now everything is okay we can go and create our first virtual machine okay so for this virtual machine I will create a just an Ubuntu server pretty simple pretty neat okay so right click on your Hyper-V server and the new virtual machine so you get a wizard so we'll head next so let's give it a name so it's obviously Ubuntu server and here of course store the virtual machine in a different location of course we must actually create it inside the directory that we have created which called VM okay let's proceed to next So here you have the option to choose generation 1 or generation 2. So if you are using 64 bits, it's better to choose uh, generation 2. But if you want your virtual machine to support both 32 and 64, you can choose generation 1. So me, I will just choose generation 2 and I will go next. Here, here you have to set up uh, the amount of memory to allocate to this machine so for me 2 gigabits is far enough okay next this is the important step you have actually to, to, to choose the virtual switch that we have created before which called external lane okay then next here the step for to connect to the virtual hard disk here you have actually to give it a name so I will stick with the default Ubuntu server dot VHTX okay and the location the location is as it is or you can just choose uh, the one that we have created which is actually inside VHT okay so the virtual desk will be actually inside the directory VHT that we have created okay so it's better to choose this path here and for the size of the virtual disk I will choose that 5 gigabytes because I will not be installed in a graphical user interface just for uh, server things okay okay I guess I'm done here so let's go to our next step so here actually I will just uh, choose the option to install operating system later okay so I will go next and here is a review of all the things that we have set up so you can review it for further uh, modification if you want and I will hit finally finish So now everything is going to be uh, set up. Et voila, as you can see, our Ubuntu server virtual machine has been created. If we go to the settings, you can review all the hardware settings that we have actually done. So this is our two gigabytes of memory. The processor it has allocated just one by default, so you can actually increase it if you want. We have our hard drive here, virtual hard drive, and this is the path to it as we have set up. We have also our network card that is connected to our external lane. Okay. Here we go. Okay, now we have set up our Ubuntu server. 
but actually we need to attach to it uh, ISO file so we can boot it up and install Ubuntu server okay so for that we have actually to go back to our server here okay and we have to enable actually file and print sharing in order to copy to it the ISO file so you can go just to this uh, command line here on your server and execute this command here which allows us to open a rule in our firewall to actually enable file and print sharing okay here we go the rule has been now added so we can go to our uh, windows 10 machine and go to actually the prompt okay and here we enter simply the host name or IP address of actually our Hyper-V server, okay? And actually you enter the credentials admin and you get all the files in your server. So as you can see here, it's a network share. So I can create, for example, here uh, an ISO file or folder, okay? And I will copy to this folder the ISO image I want to actually boot with. So I'll copy it from another server. So for example, here I will choose Ubuntu. Here we go. So I'm copying here the ISO of Ubuntu server. Okay, the file has been copied, so I get rid of this share here. So if I return back to my Hyper-V manager, and I'm going to the settings in order to add actually a DVD boot drive, okay? So I will add here SCSI controller, or add, I will choose a DVD, okay? I will add it. Then here I will choose the image file in order to boot with. So I will browse and I will go to the directory where I have actually put the ISO image. So here we go. And I will choose this ISO of Ubuntu and I will apply. Okay. So actually here I have to choose the boot from actually this uh, Ubuntu ISO DVD drive. So I will move it up. Here we go. So it's going to boot directly from it. So I will apply the changes. Okay. Then I will connect to my uh, virtual machine and I will start it. Here we go. So actually here I get an error. So the image hash and certificate are not allowed. So this is due actually to the secure boot which is enabled. So let's fix that. So I will turn off the machine. Here we go. Okay. So actually we we'll right click on the virtual machine, we go to the settings, then security and we uncheck this enable secure boot. Okay. So let's apply that and see if we can resolve the issue. Here we go, let's start it again. Here we go, you can see now that I can actually go and install our Ubuntu server, okay? The usual way we go, okay? 
So that was just a brief actually uh, introduction to how install a virtual machine. Here we are using Ubuntu in Hyper-V server. As always, I hope it has been informative for you and I want to thank you for viewing. Bye-bye.